Black Box Radio, we have T.J. Smith at the Roma Report today. Hey, T.J. Wayne, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. T.J. is a mayoral candidate in Baltimore City 2020. Democratic candidate, right? Uh, yes, that's right. What exactly has that gone on with that since this big, this virus we're going through, this event in our lifetime that stopped everything? How has it, how has it affected your campaign, your life at this moment? It's crazy. I mean, it, it's obviously something like we've never seen before, but uh, people's health is more important in this campaign. That's the bottom line. I mean, how has it affected me? Um, I wish I could be in studio with you having this conversation, but we're not because we we have to do what we have to do to be responsible. My schedule used to be from morning till night, basically, with uh, events, meetings, et cetera, planned throughout the day to basically all but stopping that. Uh, doing a lot of virtual things, which is a good medium to use. But um, it's, again, trying to promote the word of to people to be healthy. Uh, one of the approaches that I've taken is I'm not criticizing the current mayor um, while we're in this situation. While we might be uh, competitors, I kind of look at this as a sport. And it's a time for sportsmanship. And really, we have to all rally around each other because we have something unprecedented going on. And I think if there's something of value that I can add that can help us collectively, that's more productive than trying to take political shots at someone who's trying to lead the city through a crisis that no one has ever seen or dealt with before. So um, it's been challenging, undoubtedly, because you're in the midst of this election. I mean, I got a, a favorable poll and you're supposed to be a bit excited about that. But I'm more concerned about the effect that this uh, virus is going to have on us long term. Um, mm-hmm. in the short term, of course, that there are people who are going to be getting sick and there are people who are going to die as a result of this. And that uh, plays a bigger role to me than anything else that's going on. I mean. My mom and my aunts and my uncles, everyone who raised me are in their 60s and older now. So Mm -hmm. it's a great concern. My grandmother is 93. um, Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a great concern for me. It's like you're going on with your life and and you have a new normal. You have to. But also you have all of these thoughts like what is happening to us? What is happening around us? It's like you look at other people who's infected, who's not. It's it's a real hard space to be in. Right. And right. to get, yeah, and to get all of this conflicting um, information from the federal government, um, it's it's just I, I don't want to get you know get into politics, but it's it's real scary the leadership that we're going through and going through something so deadly and so um, relentless unless you deal with it. It really speaks to how important leadership is because mm-hmm. if you look locally. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, you voted for Larry Hogan or not. You have to say, stepping back, he's doing a great job managing this crisis in Maryland. I give him a hand clap. He is a good job. Yes, sir. And then we look at the federal government and you have a guy that's saying, I want to pack churches on Easter. And you're like, okay, um, it's not a medical professional in the country or in the world, for that matter, that's saying that. So um, it really speaks to leadership right now and the importance of leadership during a crisis. And then we're fortunate in Maryland. Some other states aren't as fortunate. Um, uh, Florida is getting um, criticized uh, for keeping their beaches open so long. And so mm-hmm. many of the young people who are just acting irresponsibly uh, continuing to celebrate spring break and likely spreading the coronavirus. And uh, some of the sobering numbers that I'm hearing, um, you know, those of us, when we were 18, we thought we were invincible. Then you go through another invincible period at probably 25. But to see that one of the largest groups in Maryland that's infected is the group of people in their 40s is like, whoa, that smacks you right in the face. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, that kids are being infected with this virus. That smacks you right in the face because early on, there was nothing but information about underlying medical conditions, seniors, elderly. Now we're seeing peer group and, 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 and to see it continue to grow, uh, what's happening in New Orleans, Mardi Gras, all the folks that were packed in there, not mm-hmm. realizing how big of a deal this would become, are going back to their st- towns and spreading this virus mm-hmm. that we don't have any sort of cure for yet. So this is some serious stuff that we're dealing with. 
It is. It and, is. And, and, and another point, really quickly. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Even here in Baltimore, there was a a, a picture, uh, a video circulating around um, social media, and I get it. I don't want to be tone deaf. It's great where I saw some National Guardsmen interacting with some Baltimore youth, but they weren't practicing social distancing. They, 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 and, and, and this is a new normal. Like we said, we can't stop the spread of this if we don't do what is being recommended. That's so awesome. although they're trying to break down the barriers, and I'm not blaming anyone, it's an education standpoint. And we have an underserved community in Baltimore that needs to get the message differently than some of us who are getting it because we're connected to social media, because we're connected to the medical field or what have you. We mm-hmm. know that they're underprivileged and underserved people who aren't getting the message the way they should be. So we have a responsibility to make sure they are. You're right. The messaging is really, really hampered at this moment. So it's, it is up to like community leaders to go and get these folks and, and tell them, listen, this is, we got to do some social distance. We got to do a little more too. I think we got to shut some stuff down mm-hmm. and really um, look at, where we are, because I th- I see people still moving around. I mean, meeting up, we got to do better. We definitely got to do better. Yeah. So, so on a personal level, mm-hmm. per se, how has it affected like your, your life? Because did you, can you campaign and work? So are you well, not, are you not able to work or? Well, I stopped working um, to do this. I actually gave up my job to, to do this full time, to run full time. I left my job in September of 2019. Um, as I came down to the final decision that I was going to make because I was working for an elected official at the time. And um, I just didn't I wanted to have a clear ethical mind as I made up my decision um, mm-hmm. to run. So I took a big gamble. And, yeah, I'm not getting a paycheck. And then moving the primary from April to June is another five weeks that I know I won't be getting paid. Granted, even if I win the primary election, I won't be getting paid until getting sworn in in, in, in December. But the point is, you at least know that you have a job that you'll be going into, whereas sure. right now I'm, I'm, I'm hanging in the balance. And again, as we look at all of this, there are people who aren't going to have jobs to go back to after this is over with. And that's mm. part of my calculus as well that I think about. So personally, I'm, um, I'm, I'm unemployed. I mean, you know, I, I had the uh, luxury of being able to retire after years of service, but I, I need to work. And, you know, I set up myself uh, from a savings standpoint to be able to take off a few months to, to, to put my full efforts and energy into running for office. But mm-hmm. uh, with all the uncertainty, it certainly, um, you know, gives you a little pause. So I'm, I'm really just focused on the campaign, trying to do as much as I can. But I don't know if there's enough reading, writing, phone calls or whatever you can make to fill the time that's now lost. With all, I'm doing a lot of what everybody else is doing. I'm watching D Nice on Instagram, uh, um, you know, right before you guys. Uh, called, yeah, I was, I was, and Michelle Obama was on there. It's just amazing the the ingenuity of our community, um, I'm telling how you. we come together in moments of crisis, and um, it really just like I I I, I don't want to. Uh, I hope this doesn't come across the wrong way. Um, but we've seen um, and read the stories of our ancestors through some of their worst moments, uh, mm-hmm. using song and using music to get them through the tough moments. And to see how many of us are rallying around through music to get everyone through it. And, and I think that's a great segue to one of the points that I think is critical for us, any of us with a voice, to talk about. And I've tweeted it out several times and I've put it out and talked about it on my live streams as much as possible. The mental health of people, the depression, the anxiety, we, we can't whisper it as a black community. We have whispered it a lot. We've always said, think about this. You can think about your own family, you know, so and so crazy, right? That's how we used to talk about people. Well, now we need to take that more seriously. And with what we have going on, we really need to focus on that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and then you know, generations of trauma that's in our you know mm-hmm. that we're going through. We got we got a lot of um, unresolved trauma. Yes, <sighs> so, yes, too much. Now, we, it, too much, um, and then now you lay this virus, and you know how it stagnates your life. Some people are not, you know, they don't know where they're going to get the next meal. They, they just don't right. know. No one knows. Right. So um, this is a lot. Um, we're trying to stay positive, and which I feel positive, but. You, you have to be thinking, like, what is going on? Like, 
<laughs> yeah, uh, uh, so I'm a man of faith. I'm a man of faith, and um, Lord knows, the Lord don't give you nothing you can't handle. And I've prayed multiple times and said, God, why'd you give me all this stuff? I mean, geez, I know you don't give us anything we can't handle, but man, my shoulders are starting to hurt from a whole <laughs> norm so much. Um, it, it, it's it's an opportunity for us to emerge out of this stronger. I think that this pandemic also can shine a light on the epidemic that's going on in Baltimore um, with the amount of intensity that we're putting on this pandemic, rightfully so. And if you think about it, uh, think about another epidemic that we've dealt with in Maryland and across the country, the opioid epidemic, mm -hmm. and how we address that when it got out of the spaces of urban America, urban um, city, city centers, and when it got into the suburbs, we addressed that with a sense of urgency, hopefully we can now use these moments to address the violent epi violence epidemic that we've seen in our city um, mm -hmm. in, in an urgent way as well. And, and using these emergency resources and emergency opportunities to really bridge the gap. Uh, hopefully Kerwin is a great spearhead to that. So you just look at everything. And, and if you're a religious person, you can look at it from that view and say, maybe things are falling into place the way that they're supposed to, because we just need a societal reset because the haves and the have nots have been growing further and further apart. And it's unfair what we're allowing the, uh, to happen in urban uh, America. That's true. And we, we're, you know, what's being exacerbated, um, what this um, virus is actually putting a light on is the corporation of America and, and how this thing works. And it, it's, it doesn't look good. You know, um, the federal government, we have to beg for money. It's, it's like um, you have a boss, you have, mm -hmm. you have the states who are the managers and the directors, and then you have the people. That's the product. And we, it's like they're going to give us our money to put back into the economy to get right back. You, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, that's what it's about. I just, I just don't understand um, what. But this has been. Um, it's almost like a civics lesson yeah. that I'm I mean, really. It, it, I'm like, wow, this is how they set this thing up. And 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 if you look at it, and we can go even deeper than that. If you look at it, and you just look at the different cries for help. Um, whether it's because of the violence in the city, whether it's because of the riots. And we go back and look at the riots of 2015 and look at all the focus that was put on West Baltimore. How much has West Baltimore improved for the people who live in West Baltimore since the riots? The people who were ground zero, how many, how much of that has improved? Not and, and yeah, people packed up and left and, and we're no longer talking about it in the way we were in 2015 and 20, early 2016. We've moved on and we can't allow the same thing to happen. We have a pandemic and we have to use the lessons from this pandemic to go back to uh, how we're dealing with the epidemic in our city. So it's just, it's just so much. Um, and it's a, it's a life lesson that we're learning and whew, boy. Yeah, something else. It's a lot. And it's sometimes a lot. you got to get smacked in the face to really get it. You know, like like Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Well, we're getting <laughs> punched in the mouth and we need to adjust our strategy in order to defend ourselves. That's true. That's true. And, and we got to do it. it. It's so unfortunate. I think that, um, well, we can't point fingers, but mismanagement is is one of the reasons we're in this mm -hmm. foolish. Uh, when, when we're in this predicament because it's been a lot of mismanagement, but we're going to move on. Um, at this point, while you're in the house, are you, I know you're thinking of your campaign, you're thinking how you're going to move forward. So once this is over, then the primaries are, are when? Uh, June uh, 2nd. June, June 2nd. 2nd. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a, that's, a, that's a pretty long time. And you said five more weeks until you're not working. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's five extra weeks of campaigning. So um, just or, or, or really just more or less being in limbo, just not knowing. Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is. That's the, the unpredictability. This is this is something that no one could have predicted. So it's just something that we all have to deal with. And, you know, uh, we, we move on and um, we, we keep pressing ahead. So well, let me um, ask a question. Since you were campaigning, do you did you think that this would be this enormous, that it would stop? us like this when you were hearing about it since um, I'm sure you were briefed early. What, what did you think? It, 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 I feel like it came on really quickly. Like um, hmm. 
as, when you started hearing about it in large scale, it came on pretty quickly. I just started hearing, um, you know, a little bit more information more quickly than not um, um, as, as decisions were going to be made. So okay. just from a campaign perspective, as you start to hear, they're going to probably tell people they can't congregate. Um, we started thinking early on before the order was given that they're going to have to move the election. There's no way people are going to be able to go to uh, locations and vote. Mm -hmm. um, so we just it, it was it, everything was so fluid and it happened so quickly. I mean, if you think um, it's March has been an eternity if you for this coronavirus. You March, March 1st, there were zero deaths attributed to coronavirus. And here we are on March 25th, and we have um, more than 800 people dead as a result of coronavirus. Um, it, it just that quick. quick. I mean, and even going back as late as March 17th, there were 100 deaths. And a week later, you're at 800 deaths. So just, it's just to show quick. you how quickly it's moving and the amount of people, um, that curve is going up sharply. V sharply and, and and I'm sure it's very scary to leadership right now. This that is that is actually that's very fast. Right. Wow. When you hear the numbers, you're like, really? <laughs> you're right, right. It's it's wow. unbelievable. It was this morning it was like seven something. It's already eight. Oh my yeah, goodness. it's 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 by the moment. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you know that the numbers are gonna uh just grow uh exponentially again and, and it's just really unfortunate because no one really knows when it's going to slow down. And the, 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 the only thing we can do is what we can do. And I think the fact that like a lot of people don't know anyone directly who is sick from coronavirus. That's true. Um, I think that's playing with people's psychological mindset of invincibility, basically, of uh, it's not going to happen to me. So um, and then the mixed messages coming out of uh, the federal government, of course, um, if, 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 if you're being given a message of thinking um, you might be able to go to church and pack the churches on Easter, which is less than a month from now, then you're thinking, OK, things are getting better. And that's just the opposite of what medical professionals are telling us. Wow. OK, TJ. Yeah, so, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And um, we're worried and but we're steadfast. and. You know, you really got to look into your higher power, your spiritual self at this point and um, just be safe, you know, wash your hands, Indeed. those type of things, because there's not much we can do unless everyone's tested. We don't know. That's right. We, we just don't know. So um, we're at the part where we get that last will and testament where you uh, mm -hmm. leave something inspiring to the people um, at this point is we need some jewels. Yeah, well, um, well, I'll, I'll say two things. Uh, Dr. Leanna Wynn, who used to be the Baltimore City Health Commissioner, said, um, treat every situation as if you have the virus and that everyone else has it. So operate like that, which means distance yourself, socially isolate yourself. Um, and then secondly, we're going to get through this. Um, when 9-11 happened, that was the uh, uh, first time we had seen a large scale terrorist attack on our uh, ground here in America. And we were wondering what is next? No planes in the sky, all the airports shut down and it's just pandemonium. But we emerged out of that. We emerged out of that better than we probably were before that. And we've learned and adapted to that way of life. And we're more vigilant people as a result. Um, this situation is the same. We're going to emerge out of this bigger and better than we were before we went into this. And it's lessons to be learned here and opportunities uh, for people while we're going through this. If you're stuck at home, if that's an opportunity to learn something different, use this opportunity to learn something different and take that skill with you as we emerge out of this and teach somebody else. Because We can be better together after we get out of this uh, uh, pandemic that we're in. It's a story that we're going to tell our uh, grandchildren and uh, 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 the younger generation that comes uh, well after us. Wow. TJ Smith, the man. We appreciate that. We really Thank do. You. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Um, and stay safe. Uh, Thank you. Take care your family. Um, let's stay, stay link. And you remember, you got to come on in the studio. Don't forget. Yeah, oh, we, 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 we've only postponed. We didn't cancel. So we sure. will make that happen. Exactly. We're going to make that happen. G? Thank you so much for taking some time to spend with us today. I know it's a lot of things that uh, are going on and I appreciate you sharing the, your insights and your perspective on what 
uh, the situation is right now as we go through this. Um, and for all the folks who are listening, if you want to hear more of the Rona Report and hear more voices, go to blackboxradio.com. That's B L A K B O X X R A D I O.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Black Box Radio. What up? Brother TJ, we really appreciate it. Well, thank you all, and thank y'all for uh, providing the platform to get information out there. Uh, y'all take care and be safe. We appreciate you. We we had to we have to collect these voices during this time. It's a significant time in history. This is the Rome Report. This is three twenty five twenty. TJ Smith, Black Box Radio. We're out.